yesterday I was perusing the Facebook group CRT TV Monitor Listings of the Pacific Northwest and I saw a post that caught my eye. Someone was moving and had abandoned a CRT TV that looked to be a pretty good size. So I decided to go over and check it out. The drive over to the TV took me by Total Games, and I thought that was a very optimistic sign. And here's the footage of me finding the TV. Why, hello. It's a Phillips! Sweet! It's got its cord! Phillips, 20 inch, it's got S video. Hell to the yes. It's got a sweet rad sticker on it. You, sir, are coming home with me. Philips was a popular CRT maker in Europe, but didn't quite catch on in America. This was a slightly rounded 20-inch bubble tube with a slightly curved appearance. Looks like it was made in 2003, and it has an S-Video port for advanced video input from video game systems of the era. I really think S-Video is underrated. It is simple and it just works. I also stopped by Portland Goodwill on the way back to my place. Their video game selection was nothing but discarded Wii Fit titles and likely dead Xbox 360s. They did have a cute little portable record player if I was into such things. I ended up getting a late 90s keyboard and mouse combo for my Mac. And I stopped by Total Games, top of the line games, on my way home. And when I finally got it home, my TV underwent a rigorous feline inspection. I cleaned the screen with a cotton cloth and water, and then dried it off with the same. It really wasn't too dirty, despite spending a night outside in the grass decided to try to air out the ports before testing. And I was pretty glad that I didn't see any corrosion or dust or problems with the rear ports. Using the front ports, I connected my Retron 3 HD and loaded up 240p test suite on my EverDrive to check out the tube. Early geometry tests look really good. I don't see any huge red flags. Not seeing any red convergence issues. The image is a little centered to the right. The image was flickering a little bit, so I decided to redo the connections, and it mostly worked after some futzing. And I switched to testing the rear inputs. I was still getting the same good signal from the rear inputs, so that was good. Yep, still looking good. Testing with an actual game, I got pretty decent results. The Retron colors tend to be a little bit muted compared to authentic hardware, but I was still getting a pretty crisp and decent looking image. Moving on to Super Mario World, I was still getting pretty decent results using the regular composite AV. This isn't even testing the S-Video yet. The S-Video has more cables for more connection and luminance is split, so 
S video is almost always a huge step up to regular um, composite RCA AV. Testing some Castlevania 1. Now, the noise on the screen is actually an artifact of this particular multi cart playing on the Retron. Besides that, it looks great. Moving on to some other 8 bit Konami goodness, I thought I'd try out Herodias, the Famicom port. Everything looked excellent, everything sounded right. Overall, I was very pleased with the performance that I was getting out of this CRT. Can't beat the price of free. I had to play until the cat ship boss, which always puts a smile on my face. Not the cat shit boss, the cat, cat ship boss. thought I would try out the Sega Genesis portion of the Retron, and I had some close feline supervision. I am booting up Mega Man The Wily Wars by Retrobit, and yeah, I set up a camera, and that is exactly where he decided to put himself. Do you mind? So, he wasn't directly in the way, but, you know, ever-present, slightly off-screen gotta make his presence known. What a cat. I really think about a 20 inch CRT is the sweet spot between 14 and 20 inches is just the perfect size for 16 bit and 8 bit games. This is the kind of screen that these games were meant to be played on. I like a slight curve to it. Overall, this is exactly the kind of CRTs that I enjoy for playing my retro video games. And to test the S-Video port, I hooked up a spare PlayStation 2 Slim and played some PlayStation 1 games on it in glorious S-Video. However, I started to notice some connection woes with some artifacts and it looks like an unstable connection. So I again refussed the, reasserted the um, S-Video connection cable and luckily I was able to get decent results. And make sure that the cable is firmly seated to ensure a good connection. A little bit jitters, but when I get into the game it is, yeah, it's still a little bit of jitters. And working on it again. Maybe I'll try and see if I can clean the port with some alcohol. And I hope that the internal connections haven't gotten brittle. But after a second readjustment, I seem to be getting a glorious S-Video picture out of this. This is a 240p game and it's displaying in all of the excellent detail. This has a bit of a scan lines and I'm very pleased with it. Thought I would check out a 3D PlayStation game so I booted up and played some Tekken 3. Zero lag, everything looks excellent, and still some tasty, tasty scan lines. Since I had the PlayStation 2 hooked up, I decided to try some anime, and Pat Labor looked awesome on it. 
I really think that anime that was designed for the 4x3 aspect ratio looks best on a CRT. Now the next problem is figuring out where am I going to put this bad boy. In the living room I have my 20 inch Panasonic chilling next to my LCD TV and various other consoles. Then in my bedroom I have my 14 inch Toshiba next to my ColecoVision in the corner. And then I have my JVC D-Series 27 inch bad boy. I decided to move my 14 inch Toshiba set with the DVD player and VCR over next to the JVC so I can watch movies and Roku on it. Then I had just about enough space to put my new Philips TV in the corner next to my ColecoVision. I moved the PlayStation 2 Slim beneath it and anime looks great on it. As does ColecoVision using the coaxial cable. I hope you enjoyed this video. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And in the future I plan on doing more videos about the enjoyment of classic video games and I really think that you need to at least have a CRT available if you really want to get the best out of your 2D graphics. So this is 8-Bit Joystick. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe and share this video with your friends and enemies that are into retro video games. Stay awesome, play retro.